Um, well, I think you've heard me say it. I think he's, you know, we're fortunate to have him. I think he's one of, um, I think he's one of the best coaches um, in in the game here today. Um, and I've said many times, I think he's a Hall of Fame. He's had a, he has and continues to have a Hall of Fame career. Um, the structure that he puts in place, you know, his ability to drive teams, um, yeah, it was a natural. And so Daryl and I talked over the summer and we've been working on it and good to get it, good to get it concluded. Very deserving. What, what would you, and I know it can be hard sometimes to single out one thing, but if you had to pinpoint his sort of biggest impact since he returned to the saddle, then what would it be? Well, I, I said it at the day the, the day we brought him in is um, structure and accountability are the two things that, to me, are calling cards of Daryl. You know, the structure in which his team plays and the accountability to the team, the accountability to the individual. Um, and he's got the ability to maximize, you know, maximize players' abilities. So um, he's done it in every place he's been. He's done it throughout his career. Um, and you see, to me, your team takes on the personality of your coach, and I think um, our team has done that. Um, but his ability to, to bring structure within a team concept um, and his ability to have con uh, accountability um, and, and clarity, which I think is really important to, to players. Clarity in what their role is, what's expected of them, um, and clarity in how he wants his teams to play. Did you, uh, did you feel any urgency to get it done in the sense that you know, he was going into the last year of his contract, or was it just a, we've made up our minds, let's get this done? Well, we're certainly aware of where he, I was certainly aware of where he was, you know, in his in his contractual status. So, um, but to me, it was a it was a no brainer. It was just you know getting it, you know, getting something that he and he and I were comfortable with. We were able to do it. But um, to me, that you know that was that was one of the priorities on the list when when last year ended, and we were able to get it done. Were you able to say how long for or anything like that? Or? Multi year, more than one. No, it's a, it's a two-year extension. He's got this year left, and then he's got a uh, two-year extension. I guess, I guess for where your group is in terms of its development and, and uh, its progression, you know, does, I guess what would you be hoping to see from this group under Daryl the next couple of years? Because obviously you've, you know, he spoke that he's seen some progress in this group, but obviously there's still work to be done. Where, where would you like to see the group continue to mature? I don't know if it's mature. Um, it's a pretty mature group, Ryan. Um, we got to continue to, you know, grow our, our team. And, and you know, I think there's a, a, a fairly – I think people know how we play. I think there's an identity to our game. Um, we got to continue to, you know, make it hard, hard – be a hard team to play against in terms of, you know, not giving up much. I think if you look how our team's built, um, from our goaltending, our defense through the middle of our I through the middle of the ice, um, I think we got to continue to try to refine how, I guess not refine. We got to continue to just grow how we play, and uh, you know, I think the biggest challenge in front of us this year is we're integrating a lot of new people, and. And you're integrating those people at the top of the food chain. You know, you're not at, you're not integrating necessarily guys that are, are part-time people. You're integrating people that we expect to have big roles and big minutes. And um, so I don't I don't see it. There's not going to be any change. It's just trying to find how all the pieces fit. And we've said that since the start of camp, and trying to find where chemistry is and and getting them on board of how we play. So. That to me, if you're asking me what you know, what do we want to see, or what's the biggest challenge in front of us, I think it's trying to get seeing how all these pieces fit together. For what you said that when when you hired Daryl in March 2021, one of the main things you said was he gets the most out of the teams that he coaches. Now that you've had a couple of years firsthand with him, how does he do that? Well, I think a little bit back to what I just said. Pat, there's there's accountability. I think there's real clarity. Um, I think what all 
players want is just just clarity and and where they fit um, you know what what's expected of them what the role is um, and then he pushes you know and he's demanding and uh, you know I think you've heard him say okay is not okay you know so he he's he sets a standard for what the expectation of is of the individual um, and the team and he's able to to get them to reach those levels and then there's you know, on the collective, it's just, you know, a real, a real, you know, his teams play structured hockey. And structure's there to save you, you know, when things aren't going well. And uh, um, you, can, you can rely on it. And, and in today's game, you need skill, you need talent. But if you look at those teams that have success, there's a team structure that they rely on. Um, but to me, the ability to, to, to make people accountable um, – and to, to, to push players, I think, has allowed him to, you know, allow him to, to maximize the talents of the, of the individual. You mentioned the fact that there are a ton of new pieces in this organization now. What have been your impressions of Daryl Sutter and his work in trying to integrate everyone to the lineup and putting them in optimal places? Well, I think he's done a good job. I mean, you, you, you I mean, eight, eight, eight preseason games is a lot, but I think we needed it to, you know, it's two things. You're doing evaluation um, partly, and then you're trying to get the people that are here, you know, up to speed and get their games in order. Um, so we've tried to we've tried to accomplish both. I think Dar- you've seen it even last night as the game went along. There's you know there was always some tinkering, um, but I think he's got you know now we've got work to do even before we start Thursday this week and next um, in terms of our practice schedule. But I think he's done a really good job to get peop, you know, get a sense of who he in pairs up front. Um, he's gotten a look at a lot of different combinations, a lot of different defense pairs. Um, I think he's got, him and his staff have got a pretty good idea of, of, of how they want to start. Um, it's our job and my job to continue to you know, add, add options for them. Um, but I think he's, you know, he's got the team, and we'll have the team ready to go for opening night. Are you open to adding external help between now and Thursday to put your team in a position? To play with the I think you're always open to it. You know, if it makes, if if there's opportunities there to make our team better, um, I would say. You know, looking through camp, we came into camp, and I was asked before camp what you know. Number one, we have to sort out the defense. It's still, probably a work in progress there, specifically sort of on that on that three pair, um, and then you know the forward group, right? We're probably we're st- that group. You know, however it works, you, we, we're we're still looking at a top nine forward, and uh, there's no perfect teams, and and I think we leave camp still with some questions uh, in both. Um, so we'll keep working away, and like I said, if there's if there's opportunities to help us today, tomorrow, and, and moving forward, that's the job is to continue to look for those. Do you have anybody on waivers today? We do. We have um, three players on waivers today: Yusuf Valamaki, Dennis Gilbert, um, and Redeem Zahorna are all three on waivers today, and we'll. You know, we'll, I I think you guys know I don't like to comment too much on that until we go through that process. Um, but those three are on there on waivers today. And it's, you know, like I said, I think longest sort of guy here with with me is is um, is you so. Um, and I think we all know it's been a it, it's been a tough couple of years for you so. Um, you know, he's gotten he, he'd had some injuries, um, and then just getting some traction here the last little bit. So we'll see we'll see where it all goes and and. Uh, but we've got to, you know, we're like everybody else. We've got to get down in our roster situation. The, the Oliver Shillington situation also is, number one, our, our number one focus is Oliver's well-being. Um, but there's also cap implications and all those types of things that, that factor in. So um, there's a bit of a, you know, we've got some things going on. Any clarity on Shillington yet? Just in terms no. of, okay. that's the same. As I told that day, he's it's a personal matter, and 
until there's clarity on it, we'll leave it at that. Daryl Sutter, you, you guys, you've signed a few free agents in recent years, and and players talk. You know how important is it when players endorse a head coach or the culture or structure that he's built over here? And how important is that in terms of re-signing Sutter and bringing him back? In terms of just just players endorsing and, and kind of clearly when you bring in the likes of Hubert and Weger, they're talking to. Their peers, sure, they've yeah. heard good well, things. Well, I think he is, Salam, he's well known. Like he, he's been around, right? People know. And I think his reputation precedes himself, right? Sometimes the bark's a little bit worse than the bite. You know, you think, oh, this story, you know, is he, what kind of coach is he or how hard is he and all these types of things. But I think you find that players that play for him, they know they're going to get pushed. They know there's going to be accountability. You know there's going to be structure in the team. Ultimately, Salam, I always say the coaches, the, the, the players, players want to be coached, right? Co they do. They, they, you know, and, 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 you know, they want to get better. And some, there's some days that, you know, all of us, none of us like to sort of get pushed, you know, it's not easy, but um, they know that makes them better. They know it makes their team better. Um, so I know, I know even all those, those players coming in, um, you know, they were excited to get to know him. They are excited to play for him. Um, and the thing with Darren, we say it all the time, you, you know, the, you guys deal with him on the public side, and um, but you go back to players that have played for him. He's got strong relationships with his guys. He's cares, he cares deeply for his players. And uh, he cares for them, you know, their families. Um, now when it's work time, he's going to, you know, he's going to push them. And... Uh, but that's what this business is about. It's a it's a hard business. You 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 you, you need that uh, you need that discipline. But he's uh, guys know he, they're playing for a, for a top level coach. Do you have a structure for getting your roster ready for Monday? Are you like are you had a twenty two man situation, a twenty three, a set combination of forwards and defensemen? Like how are you approaching building that roster out? Yeah, we've got a bunch of different scenarios. Um, we'll see. Like I said, a lot of this is going to be there's there's cap implications. When you look at, you know, Shillington's cap number and him not being available and, um, you know, not to bore you guys with, you know, he's got to show up in a roster and potentially down the road if there's an LTI placement, you want to eat up as much of your salary uh, cap as you can or you want to get as close to the salary cap as, as you can. So there'll be some, um, you know, there'll be some cap maneuvering as we go through it and ultimately you're trying to ice the best roster you can. Sorry, can I just clarify that? Are you waiting for the league on what you can do with Oliver's salary if he's not here for opening night, or are you just deciding how you're going to treat it? No, we don't get to decide how we get to treat him. <laughs> he's, he'll, he has to be part of our roster.